Welcome to Creepy Chips Horror Show! With special guest, Slipwick the Skeleton. It's not my fault the babes like me, man. <laughs> also, whoa! Don't forget about your legendary loser host himself, Creepy Joe! Welcome to Creepy Joe's Horror Show. Tonight, we have Twice Dead from 1988. Twice Dead is about a family that's moving into a house that is haunted by the ghost of a once great actor. A few neighborhood punks cause trouble though and eventually try to take the house over and kill the family, but the ghost helps them out. Alright, welcome back. Uh, Twice Dead, 1988. This movie is kind of, it captures California, you know, punk slash goth scene perfectly at the times. Uh, I was really young in 1988, but uh, I was very much, you know, I grew up in the 90s more so, but, you know, it was all a continuance of the 80s, you know, and like we grew up watching movies that were 10 years before our time. So like, you know, this era of like style, like the way they dressed in this and everything, it was still going on in the early 90s. And like, I very much remember it. and. Uh, it was kind of how we all dressed as well, well like my older cousins and stuff like that. But I, I love this era and uh, it just, it cracks me up because we say it's like extreme, like, you know, or at, at the time, like their parents or their grandparents really thought they were extreme. But uh, it captures that era perfectly and uh, it sets the scene for this, you know, situation but you know obviously not everybody acted the way these kids did or whatever in adults I don't, I don't even know what they I think they look like they're some of them could be like 30 years old but you know it is what it is but directed by uh, Burt Dragon and I would show you a picture of them but it doesn't exist <laughs> there's not one picture on Google or I can't find anything but it, uh, starring uh, Brooke Bundy, uh, plays Sylvia, the wife, and then um, Chris Ber Berg Bergard, Chris yeah, Chris Bergard, I think. Uh, doesn't matter either way, but uh, Silk, uh, he's one of the main characters. And then you got Tom Bres Bresnahan, plays Scott, the brother, and then uh, we have Jill Whitlow who plays Robin, the sister, who's really like the two main characters, and uh, Scott and Robin. And then you have Jonathan Chapin who plays Crip, and plays a really, he's like probably my favorite character of the whole movie. He plays like a really creepy punk who's like, you know, ridiculously in love with Robin, and is obsessed with her. And then, uh, you have Sam Melville, who plays Harry, that's the dad. And then uh, Jolene Lutz, who plays Candy, which is one of the punk girls. And the other, the other punks, there's a couple other characters in the movie that I'm just leaving out because their parts weren't significant enough, or I couldn't find any pictures of them, you know, other than like screenshots of like the movie. But like, uh, I can't find much on a lot of these actors for whatever reason, like, I, I don't know what other projects they're involved in, because as you know, I like to, you know, mention if they're in any other cool movies or not. And I couldn't find much, but this, the director, uh, Bird Dragon, I believe only directed, he only made two movies, this and one other movie, that, that I'm aware of, or maybe three, because I think he did Suburbia, but, uh, yeah, it's weird. I can't find much. Usually, there's a you know avalanche of information, but in this case, there's not. But anyway, the movie starts out with you know mom, dad, brother, and sister. 
Well, that's not how it starts. It starts out with the uh, old actor in the 20s, or I, I believe it's the 20s. Hopefully I'm not wrong about that. It doesn't really matter, but it was like the Victorian era, uh, you know, stabbing his, the love of his life. But it, he was like a magician, and uh, the police are at his door. So good. It turns out it's like a puppet, but, and he commits suicide, he hangs himself. That's how the movie starts out. It's kind of don't really understand what's going on exactly, but uh, it comes clear later on in the movie. But the family is down the line related to that, or somehow ended up at the house. Uh, I don't think they're related to him. I think that Crip is related to him, to them. Somehow, and I should know this because you know, I've seen this movie a few times, but it's one of those movies that you just put on in the background, kind of. It's not like I sit down and study it every day, but from what I gather, they're moving into this house and it was used as a funeral home for a while. It's like it was like their uncles passed down there. And there's this really bitching uh, Cadillac hearse that is involved in the movie. But anyway, they move in, and as soon as they get there, all these punks are sitting on their lawn. And uh, they basically are squatting out, like, basically took the house over. And the house is like a huge house, you can tell. It's like a funeral home type house. And, by the way, pardon me if you can hear this rain, it's like super loud. It is pouring out, but... It makes a better setting anyway for a horror movie review, for me anyway. But uh, I guess I'll have to start yelling over it if it gets too bad. But anyway, so these punks keep messing with them in a nutshell. They keep coming back and messing with them. And they're like really, uh, you know, not afraid to do some bad shit. You know, like they like basically like beat the, beat up the, the, the brother. They pull the sister out of the house. They, Hang, they stab their cat and hang it to the door. No. And shit like that. It's, you know, and they just keep messing with them and they keep going back and forth. Like, the brother and sister will get one up on them and then they'll get, they come back and it goes back and forth and then finally, you know, they, the, the brother start to notice that there's weird stuff going on in the house. He understands that the ghost but there's a ghost in the house and he figures it's, you know, he finds some old memorabilia from the actor who lived there. So he puts it together that that's who's haunting the house. And it turns out that he's starting to help them. You know, he notices he's helping them in certain situations. Like he starts the Cadillac hearse in the one scene. Yeah! And they couldn't get it started. and. You know, he's, he's a friendly ghost, I guess you would say. And at the end, when all this craziness is going on, and these teenagers, these punks, come in and basically kidnap, they're, they're holding them hostage, basically. <laughs> and Crip takes, you know, the sister upstairs. Robin and basically is gonna do the same thing that the actor did way back in the day, murder her and commit suicide. Because he's like a hopeless, romantic, whatever you want to call it, he's obsessed. And so that the the ghost actor, you know, takes over and starts murdering them all one by one. The only one that survives is uh, Candy, and uh, she ends up being, you know, she was a nice girl, and, you know, comes back after all is said and done, the police end up showing up, and all the, well, everyone's basically dead except for the brother and the sister and Candy. So, Candy ends up coming back and telling, uh, Scott, the brother, about you know Crip and how Crip was related 
to uh, the actor or the actor's wife or lover. <laughs> this is like something I should totally know. It's like a big part of the movie. But I don't. Uh, I mean, he's related to, to them somehow. And, uh, it just worked out, you know, he died the same way. Just so weird, and, and so when you think it's over, then uh, you know the the actor's still making things happen in the house. Kind of leaves you on like a cliffhanger, but not really. If that makes sense. But you know, it is what it is. It's free on Tubi right now, and uh, I've watched it about three times already. Not recently but I, it's been on there for a couple of years now I watched it a while back and I just it's it's one of the movies on there that stood out to me that I, I just liked like the whole vibe of the movie and the cheesiness of it and you know the era I, I love the era and you know there's a, some cool cars in it you know I think there's a Trans Am or Firebird in it as well it's, it's, it's just a cool movie so check it out and uh this is installment number five uh, i you know i five five videos in f five days of october so far and uh i'm gonna keep this going everything that i'm watching you can watch on tv for free so uh get to it and uh stay tuned for tomorrow's episode stay creepy ah.